In this video, I'll be showing you how to connect to an Azure SQL database from SQL Server Management Studio on your laptop. Here I am in the Azure portal and I'm on my SQL dashboard. Now I want to connect to my AdventureWorks 2012 SQL database. So let me click on AdventureWorks. and take a quick look. There are a couple of things that we need to do before we can connect to our database from Management Studio. And the first is we need to configure the firewall. By default, when you create a new SQL Server, nothing is able to connect to it. It is totally secure. We have to allow connections through to it. So if I click on Set Server Firewall, this is where we can configure firewall rules and allow IP addresses and IP address ranges through to our SQL Azure database. We can create a rule name and we can put in an IP address range. Here is our current IP address, but Microsoft have made life very easy and they've added a button here called Add Client IP. So if I click on that, it automatically gets added in to the list of IP addresses. We also have this option here called Allow Access to Azure Services. So again, by default, this is off, which means that no other Azure service can connect to your SQL database. So it, again, it is kept secure. If you wish other Azure services to be able to talk to your database, then you need to turn this on. But you should be aware that turning this on allows not just your Azure services, but any other Azure service to be able to connect to your database. So it's not the most secure of systems. There are better ways of connecting Azure services through IP addresses, which is a safer way to allow only the things that you wish to. So do be careful if you do turn on this option to allow access from other Azure services, because it does mean that other people could try and connect to your database. So once you've set your firewall rule, we can now save this. And now we are able to connect to Azure from my IP address. Now before we can connect to our Azure SQL Server, we need to know what the connection string is going to be. In your office, it's generally very simple. You just type in the name of the Windows server that your SQL instance is running on. But because we are connecting over the internet, the connection string is slightly more complex. But again, Microsoft have helped us here and given us this link called Show Database Connection Strings. So if I click on this, we have connection strings for ADO.NET, JDBC, ODBC, and PHP. Now if I just zoom into one of these, just so you can see, here is connection strings for SQL authentication. For connecting from Management Studio, the only bit that we actually need is this bit, which is the name of the server dot database dot windows dot net comma fourteen thirty three and that is all that you require to connect from Management Studio. But if you're building a Windows app or a JDBC app, then you have the complete connection string that you require to be able to connect. So now that we have those two pieces of information, we can now go over to Management Studio and connect to SQL. So let me come over to SQL Server Management Studio, click on Connect, Database Engine. I already have the name of my SQL Server listed here. I can then log in as the admin account which created iSQL Server using SQL Server authentication. If I wish, I can specify the database that I wish to connect to, but I'm going to leave that as default for the moment. And then I simply click Connect. And that will connect to my Azure SQL Server. If I pull down the database list, you'll see that I have two databases, AdventureWorks 2012 and my SyncDB. And if I pull down the security, you'll see that I have several users already created on this database. 
Now the first thing you're going to notice looking at an Azure SQL Server is that there is a rather limited set of options. There is no SQL agent, there's no service catalogs, there's no replication options always on, logs or anything else. You have to remember that Azure SQL Database is simply a platform as a service. All it is offering us is somewhere to put our tables, our procedures and our data. All the features that you are used to in a traditional on-premises database are not part of database as a service. They are available as other services within Microsoft Azure if you need them. Now that we've attached, let's just run a few queries. So let me log into my Azure database again. So let's just so if we run select at at version. What do we get back? We actually get Microsoft SQL Azure version 12. So this is actually a specific version of Microsoft SQL Server called Microsoft SQL Azure. If we run some server properties, you'll see that the addition is called SQL Azure. The product version is version 12 and it's RTM. If we wanted to create a new database, using Management Studio, then all we have to do is say Create Database DB1. It's as simple as that. We don't have to specify the files, the file growth, the file groups, the recovery model, because all of that is taken care of for us. If we want to be a bit more specific, we can specify the collation, the maximum size, the addition, and the service objective that we wish to use. And there we are, our database created, and that took just over a minute. One thing you're going to find out <coughs> very quickly is that you can't use the use command. So if I try and change to this DB1 that I've just created, you'll find that it comes up and says the use statement is not supported. The only way to change database is by using the drop down, and now I can select DB1. But once you've selected a user database, you'll find that the drop down list no longer works. It actually hangs Management Studio, which is a bit unfortunate. So now that we've changed to DB1, we can run select database properties and we'll see that this is a standard addition. We can easily change the addition using T SQL. We can just say the auto database modify and change the addition back to basic. And that was fairly quick. If I run property again, we will find that it still says standard. It, even though the command is completed, it does take a little while before it actually changes. And if you're really unlucky, it can reset your connection whilst it restarts the database. But on this occasion, we've got away with it. So if we have a quick look at our properties of our database. We can see it's called DB1. It's online. You can't change that. Full recovery mode, you can't change that. We have compatibility level of 130, even though SQL 2017 is now released, which is 140. The default correlation, multi-user mode, which you can't change. And we're also running in snapshot isolation mode. So that's something that you should be aware of. Now we can alter the database to bring up the compatibility level to 140. It quite happily supports that. And if we now look, we'll see that we now have compatibility, compatibility level of 140, even though we're running on a SQL Server of version 2014. So I don't quite know how that works behind the scenes. As we know, I can't use use master, but if I want to go back to the master database, I need to actually type in the master at the top to move back. So if we look at all the databases that are running on this particular SQL server, you'll see I have a whole range of different compatibility levels. The server was created several years back, which is why it's running in compatibility 100. And you can see how the different databases over time have been converted. So I hope that has given you a good introduction on how to connect to an Azure SQL Server 
and the GeoSQL database from Management Studio. There are plenty more videos available for you to watch on my YouTube channel, and there's also a free ebook that you can download from gethinellis.com, which covers a lot of what we have been talking about. So thank you very much for listening, and I hope to speak to you soon.